Hello, I understand you're interested in finding out or learning how to use essential oils for aromatherapy. I'm so excited you're here because this is my absolute passion. After nearly 30 years as a professional aromatherapist, I can see our industry going very much down the line of using essential oils topically for things like eczema, psoriasis, etc, etc. However, aromatherapy in its truest art is magnificent. So, let me tell you a bit about why it's important first. So, you've, you've seen my little bottles of essential oils. These are concentrated essences of plants. And uh, what they are really are um, communication signaling um, chemicals. So actually, people say that essential oils are in plants. They're not. What we use is what's called a secondary metabolite, which is the plant uses it to, it doesn't use it for respiration. So it's not fundamental to its existence for breathing, etc., for growth but they, it uses it to make its life easier. So for example, they put chemicals, a plant might put chemicals into the ground to stop other plants germinating so that it's got a nice space, or it might flush the chemicals into its leaves to prevent a caterpillar eating it, making it all bitter, so it goes. Um, or it might uh, send out these volatiles into the air in the fragrances of roses, for example, to attract pollinators. So chemicals are, these chemicals are chemi uh, communication signalling um, chemicals. So this is what we are reading when we um, inhale them ourselves. Now, there's lots of different ways, but I think the best way personally is to use a cup of warm water I get a boil the kettle have um, hot water about half full and then just one single drop of essential oil so now I say that it's going to be one drop here but I've already done this in another video a little while ago so it's um, going to be very strong but this is jasmine oil so jasmine oil is very good at saying forget all your worries just be in the moment. So I am going to be absolutely chill. And if you, in case you've never seen jasmine oil, see if I can get close enough for you to be able to see its beautiful colour and viscosity. And can you see how at the top of the um, drop it's quite clear, but as it gets heavier down the bottom, it's darker. Gone. Now, inside of that drop, that single drop, are hundreds of different components an essential oil drop is already what we call call a synergy so normally when you see the word synergy it means a blend of essential oils but synergy means lots of components working in harmony and a drop of essential oil is made up of hundreds of different natural chemicals so what i suggest you do is simply sit with your drink, your cup of water. Don't drink it. <laughs> it's a whole debate there about in, uh, ingestion. But what we want to do here is simply experience what we call the volatiles. So you'll notice that the fragrance is likely to change. So what we can do is we can waft it or we can ho hold it like this so that the air goes straight up to our nose and you'll find that the fragrance changes. The reason for that is some components are much lighter, some components are heavier. And remember in the drop, we saw it was clear at the top, heavy at the bottom. Some components have bigger molecules. Now, the ones that are small are light, so they evaporate off quickly. And if you try on a new perfume, you'll notice it changes over time. It's called the dry down if you were looking for the technical um, description. And what happens is the small molecules evaporate up, they hit the back of your nose, the olfactory bulb, very, very quickly. The ones that are heavier take longer and the ones that are heaviest take longer still. 
So as you start to, you'll, what you'll find is you get a, a bright sharpness at first because those are light smells and then the huskiness, the musky sort of sexy deeper ones come through later and they balance out the fragrance. So what happens is they go up your nose, you are inhaling them two different ways and so immediately you're sending them in two different ways, two different directions. So firstly, up the nose very very quickly goes to the olfactory bulb which is only about the size of a five pence piece if you're English or a dime if you're American and on that there are um, thousands like 10,000 um, receptors I should have checked that before I did my video but a lot <laughs> that send messages to the brain and the part of the brain that interprets fragrance is called the limbic system. So the limbic system is a busy place. It also um, looks after mood. It looks after learning, cognition, memory. Because they're in, uh, they're all close, what you'll find is they're intrinsically linked. So for example, if you smell baking bread, it may immediately makes you think of something, yeah? You think of, some people might think, oh, I smell lavender, it makes me think of my nan. It's because it's in hitting the same area as memory. Now, there's good sides and bad sides to that. Somebody who has PTSD will often have flashbacks because of fragrances, not necessarily flowers. Um, a barbecue, for example, is searing, is meat, which could be burning flesh you know from war so there's good sides and bad sides to it and you can immediately see how fragrance locks into a part of your mind that goes ah i'm not i'm i'm interpreting interpreting things but sometimes i'm interpreting them well sometimes i'm not um and science shows us that potentially we can um we have an, a library a data bank of three million fragrances so like anything, you can train your um, data bank to learn more, more words, more um, tunes, whatever, whatever you're practicing, you will get stronger. So fragrance training is extremely helpful. So let's say we're just sitting here and thinking about what are we reading in that blend? Can I smell the top notes? Can I smell the sharp ones? Can I find the deep parts? As it's spreading out in a space, can I find the architecture of the blend? How does it make me feel? How does it make me feel? Do I feel invigorated? Do I feel calm? What's it make me thinking? What's it making me think of? That's a very interesting one. So it might not necessarily be the memory of the plant that's uh, triggering you, but actually sometimes it takes you to an emotion and then a memory of an emotion may come up and you think, that's really weird. Why am I, not th why am I thinking of that? It's a very, very healing thing to do. Now, one of the places that... Um, essential oils and fragrances will often take you to is moods moods that you felt before emotions and feelings that you've um, felt before so let's just check a, a comprehension thing that you understand it the same way that i do that i would say that a feeling describes physically the emotion i'm feeling so I feel angry, but the emotion is the word for angry. If you is the is the is the word, and then the mood would be the atmosphere of the time, right? So generally, I'm feeling angry most of the time, yeah. But it's that feeling, that visceral sensation of the knot in the stomach, and you might find that that comes up. Now, what's strange and difficult sometimes to manage is that. The chances are it's out of context. And I often write in my books about um, an example 
of uh, massage in particular can bring this up, but just enjoying the fragrance and, and working your way through the fragrance can definitely bring it up. So you might have had a um, cousin, George. And George was a bit of a pain in the neck when he was a kid. He used to kick cats. And he, you saw him kick this cat once and it made you furious. And, but over the years, he's grown up. You're all right with, he's all right with George, a bit of an idiot. But, yeah, I can live with George. I'll take you back to the feeling of being angry. Maybe through a different context. Maybe somebody's upset you at work. You are angry. You smell your oil. Then you see George and suddenly you really want to kick George <laughs> because it's moved it. And what's happening is that anger has stayed there and you're processing it. Now, anger staying there, we're told, don't shout, keep it inside. I'm telling you, it's a terrible thing to do <laughs> because these leave negative imprints on our tissues they we become inflamed we send out inflammatory markers then um, physiologically we create inflammation in the body and before you know where you are you've got diabetes heart disease etc etc one of the most important things that you can do is process your emotions effectively i don't mean kick george but essential oils can help you do that just to sit there and even though what's important to recognise is it's a memory. It doesn't belong in here and now. It's moving through my tissues because it does lodge in the tissues. And to come through the tissues, it needs to go through my mind. Stand back as an observer. If you can, recognise that that is a memory walking through your mind. It doesn't necessarily belong to you as a person at your age now it's part of your lifetime but watch it just watch it and let it go it's interesting how lovely how lovely that i am um, was so caring for the cat that i wanted to kick george oh bless george he's grown up now it's gone Beautiful, beautiful fragrances, and they can do that. So which essential oil do you choose? Well, eventually you will come to a time when you have a database full of facts about an essential oil. But using that faculty actually is a step backwards because what you want to do is you want to go, how does it make me feel? And to do that, you have to take the conscious mind out and ask the conscious mind to do the job. So to do the conscious mind, I use these Tongue of the Trees cards. That, I'll tell you now, I did not expect to be as magnificent as they are when I was doing them. I was in absolute hate with them. <laughs> but I sat with 56 different oils and let them talk to me and help me through different challenges and wrote down the poems that they told me about what was going on in my life. And even then I didn't like them. <laughs> it's only when I put them in my hands and I heard the oils talk back to me that I realised, wow, that is really quite some tool. So, because between you and I, I'm feeling a little enraged right now about stuff going on in my life. I'm going to ask the cards, what do I need to let it go? So here we go. I want this card. Ha! <laughs> peppermint. You know, nope. anybody who knows me knows I hate peppermint. <laughs> I hate it. But it says determination. So I'm going to trust it and I'm going to work with it. Funny actually. What's really strange is I can feel and taste and smell the peppermint note within the the um jasmine now because my brain's locked into the peppermint it's funny how your brain and your voice uh, fragrance work i'm going to look in here i'm going to go in the bit with the bluey green strip jade in the aromatics at the front and i'm going to see what it says 
about the tantrum that I am in at the moment. It says, moonlight reflected on a waveless sea, constellations easily viewed in the absence of clouds. The navigator stands steady at the helm of the ship, effortlessly driving the ship to its course. That is I. Alleviating distraction, stilling the mind, where concentration is peaceful, hear me call you loud. Raising your focus in a sound tunnel where nothing else is heard. Riveting, I demand attention. Concentrate with my icy gold, the cold glare. I insist you take notice and important thoughts prepare. That's very good. Like I say, I am very angry and it's stopping me concentrate. So, peppermint to the rescue. Not looking forward to it because I don't really like it. <laughs> anyway, now you saw what I did. I used my pot. But likewise, you could use a drop on an aroma pendant. What I would say to you is if you are using peppermint, you won't want to use it all day because it will give you a headache and it will feel like somebody's been shouting at you all day. Likewise, your langa lang will make you feel like you want to throw up. Something like rose to help you with through grief, lavender to help you with stress, chamomile to help you let things go. You just have one drop and you can leave it on all day. Likewise, you can get like aroma pendants, uh, sorry, aroma bracelets, one drop on there. Just be careful. Some of the ones with the lava beads, they haven't got an, a casement to protect your skin from the oil. And so you will want to do, dilute your essential oil into some carrier oil, vegetable oil, oil olive oil. Just one drop into a bit and then pop that on just so that you don't have something like peppermint will make your skin sore. So just watch that. You could use a diffuser. You could use uh, an evaporator, which is the well, uh, how I tend to use it, which is a little pot with a candle underneath just to keep it warm. And if you're using that, just pour in hot water and your candle will keep the heat going. And then you only need one drop. When you're using essential oils for aromatherapy, one drop is all you're going to need because it is a subtle conversation. They become overwhelming. Like I say, now there's two drops in that and it's fragrancing the whole room and I'm starting to feel a little bit nauseous and that is what's going to happen. You only need a solitary drop. Um, the other way that I like to use is simply to have a piece of paper one drop on there, waft it on the tissue, whatever. Sometimes I'll put my tissue down in my bra strap. All that you need is that lift of molecules. And incidentally, don't be worried if you can't smell the oil. If you think, now that's not enough, because the, the molecules are being inhaled, they are going to the back of the throat. The other route that they can go is down into the, down the throat into the lungs. And when they go to the lungs, the capillaries send the uh, molecules in tiny, tiny amounts through to the rest of the body. You would have thought that that would do nothing. However, there are uh, clinical trials that show, um, for example, people with uh, seborrhea and uh, no, Seborrheic dermatitis is what I'm trying to say. So like a, a greasy eczema on their, uh, on their scalp got better after inhaling just essential oils. So at a time where touch has gone out the window, <laughs> we don't want to touch anybody, do we? This is magnificent. It will interact with the brains, brain. It helps neurotransmitters to fire it will alter your mood so for example if you are feeling anxious or depressed you will feel an immediate benefit which will improve over time essential oil usage is cumulative so the more that you work at it you know this is like muscle memory you know what do they say 40,000 hours or something to make um you into an expert at something well that's a lot of practice isn't it take your time 
start to understand which oils you're using for what and if you want to go right okay my brain is telling me one thing but i'm really not trusting my brain at the moment use your tongue of the trees cards to tap in and say right what does my unconscious mind want because remember the feelings the emotions they don't come from the conscious mind they belong to the unconscious mind thoughts a conscious mind so if thoughts and feelings are not in agreement it's very hard to decipher your feelings very hard without a tool so this is just one tool that can really help so you take one card and that tells you which oil you should be using and if i were you i would spend five minutes a day just in silent conversation with that oil how is it making me feel how is it making me feel right what's it making me think of sit don't run away don't run away from that memory don't run away from that thought even if it feels crushing sit with the oil and let it dissipate it will it'll just leave the body leave the tissues and once it's left the tissues it can come back again so there we have it how do you use essential oils for aromatherapy